With the Pacific having been out for over a week now and plenty of players jumping back into the game, there's a chance that you've missed a bunch of cool hidden details that the DICE developers have slipped into content over the last few months or so. With my video earlier this week, we covered some of these details specifically within the Pacific maps, so things like animals swimming around on Pacific Storm. If you missed that video, make sure you check it out. It's linked in the description. But right now, we're going to dive into some more awesome details within Battlefield 5. First of all, then, let's talk about the new Katana Battle Pickup Weapon. Currently, you can find this on both of the Pacific maps, and the holder sacrifices one of their two gadgets in order to put it in their loadout. It provides you with an extremely brutal close quarters weapon that is capable of downing opponents in a single swing, so it's an extremely attractive weapon to hold on to. However, what you might not know is that the katana has some hidden statistics that make it perhaps the better option of the two different battle pickups, the other one being the flamethrower. Now, according to DICE developer Drunksy, the Katana's heavy attack, which you can activate by pushing the aim down sight button, that gives you more range when you're attacking an enemy player. That means you can lunge from a greater distance to make the weapon connect. The standard attack, that has a max range of 1.8 meters, whereas the heavy attack, that can hit a player from up to 2.5 meters away. The heavy attack also rewards players with an instant 30 health point boost when it's activated, and that sits on top of the health regeneration that you get for successfully killing your targets. That's right, the katana boosts your health after each kill. You might have noticed this whilst you were going on a killing spree, but you might not have noticed and you might have wondered why you managed to stay alive for as long as you did. Apparently the development team thought that this would be quite a controversial decision, but in practice it is very easy to see why this makes sense. You've got to get close to your opponents in order to kill them with a katana, and most of the time you are going to be taking damage from them as they see you coming towards them. And you know what, since we've discussed the katana so much here, it is only fair that we give the flamethrower a little bit of airtime. Something you might not have noticed here is when you reload the weapon, which is not really a reload, but it's a replacement of the ignition cylinder, you're going to notice that the soldier uses a spent shell casing to pry the shield off the top of the cylinder. This isn't the only time you're going to see your soldier use spent casings in Battlefield 5, however. The MG42 it also uses this cool little detail when the barrel overheats. Here you can see the soldier using a shell casing to slide out that warped glowing red barrel and replacing it with another one. Now of course the point here is to use that casing so that the soldier's hand doesn't get burned. As if it wasn't bad enough that you've been thrust into a world war, you didn't even have the tools to work your weapons properly. You just sort of had to make do. For our next detail, we're going to be listening out for audio cues. Did you know that in Battlefield 5, if you're going on a particularly good headshot killstreak whilst using a sniper rifle, your soldier will start counting off how many players they've killed? It's true. You can hear it in this clip here. Whilst it's not something you're likely to hear all that often, unless you're someone like Stoddy and you're blasting off heads every time you fire a bullet, it is still something pretty awesome to hear. It's kind of like a small reward for your efforts in game, and it might even be something that some snipers did during the war when they were picking off multiple targets from a nest somewhere far away. In Battlefield 5, often you're not that far away from your enemies, but all the same, it's still a cool little detail that will pop up once in a while. Moving on now, we're going to take a look at the Piat Launcher. This is a gadget that's been in Battlefield 5 since the launch of the game, and it remains a fairly popular choice for its damage against vehicles and against infantry soldiers as well. It can absolutely devastate buildings, and it can cause some quite impressive rubble drops to fall on top of your enemies. And that's a feat made even more impressive when you land those kills, having to account for some of the massive drop that this projectile has. And that's where our cool little detail comes in for the Pia. Did you know that if you aim down sights with it, a small icon will appear on your minimap, letting you know the rough location of where that mortar is going to land. 
That means when you ADS, you're actually using the Pia as a mortar that it actually is, as opposed to the launcher roll that is more commonly used in Battlefield 5. It's a feature of the weapon that can become more and more useful over time the more practice you put in, learning how the mortar drops over distance. There are plenty of maps where you can take advantage of this feature, and just recently I've started using it on rounds of breakthrough on Iwo Jima when you're playing as the Americans. You're trying to push up the beach. That can be quite tricky sometimes, but with some well-placed mortar rounds from the Piat, you can flush out enemies from a particular location that will allow you to push up the beach and maybe even get into the capture zone of one of the objectives. Give it a try for yourself and see if you like using the Piat as a proper mortar. Next up on the list, we're going to discuss soldier movement because there are a few different elements to it that I don't think too many players really know about and I don't see many players using some of them during gameplay. With the most recent Pacific update, DICE made some improvements to the sliding mechanic in Battlefield 5. This is probably the most common mechanic I see people using, but I wanted to include it in this video because it has now changed slightly. Fans of Battlefield 1 will remember how much sliding influenced combat back then, and so moving forward to Battlefield 5, DICE somewhat nerfed the mechanic so that players wouldn't spam it, contorting their bodies out of the way of incoming bullets. But with the most recent update in Battlefield 5, players can now choose between a press or a double tap to activate the slide, with the default now being a double tap. To compensate for this change, DICE has slightly increased the sliding animation cooldown so that players can't spam it or abuse it to get out of gunfights unharmed, but the system is now a lot more responsive, and I find myself sliding a lot more often because of that. As a medic, sliding behind cover, coming up behind a downed soldier, and then hitting the revive button, that results in a really smooth movement between the two animations, and it makes the act of reviving somebody a whole lot more satisfying. And then we also need to talk about the combat roll as well, which is another movement element of Battlefield 5 that has seen changes since its launch, but it's another movement that I don't really see players using all that much, so maybe players don't really know about it. Some time back now, DICE changed the combat role to allow players to directly control whether it activates or whether it doesn't when falling from a certain height. You can simply hold down your crouch button when you hit the ground to perform a combat role. Now of course this does mean that you're activating an animation that you then cannot get out of until it's finished, but it does greatly reduce the fall damage inflicted upon you compared to if you hadn't tried to use the move. And then in contrast, by not performing a combat roll, you do take quite a bit more damage when you hit the ground, but you regain instant control of your soldier. So it's really up to you in certain situations as to what you want to do. Be warned though, falling from a greater height is still going to result in you dying. Falling off the twisted steel bridge onto solid ground below or chucking yourself off the Hamada bridge and expecting to survive that isn't going to be a good experience for you. And then thirdly for soldier movement, yes there is a third one, ledge grabbing. This is perhaps the one that I see the least of happening during Battlefield 5 gameplay, but again, DICE has refined this movement from launch to where it is now to give players more control. If you're a new player of Battlefield 5 or you played at launch and then you stopped playing, you might not have noticed that this has now changed. If there's a gap between you and a raised ledge of some sort, sprinting at it and then holding the jump button will activate the ledge grab animation, of which there are two different types. The shorter one plays when the ledge grab is activated from a shortfall, so say you're jumping across the roof of a house and you want to grab onto the next one, and then the longer animation that plays when you fall from a greater height but you're falling near a ledge. And as I said, this can be really useful if you're hopping across roofs or you want to drop down a certain distance, but you don't want to hit the ground all the way at the bottom. So you still might be able to save yourself at the expense of being exposed as you pull yourself back up. And lastly for today, Battlefield 5 is obviously a very graphically intensive game and we see a lot of members of the community taking advantage of that and creating their own screenshots and crafting their own images and sharing them on social media. You might see some of those images from time to time in my thumbnails. 
But did you know that the developers actually made a camera and put it in the game so that anyone can use it? Yep, it's actually true. The camera can be found on various maps in the game, and it actually saves the images that you take with it as screenshots so that you can look at them later once the battle is over. The camera replaces one of your gadgets, the same way the new katana and the flamethrower does when you pick those up on the Pacific maps. And that means that you have to remember you picked it up if you suddenly need the gadget that you put down on the ground. The camera also allows you to control exposure and the focus of the image, and it even allows you to apply a different set of filters so that you can get the look for the shot that you want. And so, there you have it, another bunch of cool details hidden within Battlefield 5 that you may not have known about. If you've got any more cool details that you've noticed, drop a comment down below and I'll be sure to check some of those out in the game and maybe I'll make another video in the future with more details like this, but I'll drop your names alongside these features so that you guys get a little bit of exposure here on the channel for finding something awesome. But a big thank you for watching this video today. Make sure you check out my new merch, Born to Shill. That's linked down in the description. Again, a big thanks for all the support on it so far. And don't forget to drop this video a like if you enjoyed it and the dislike button is there if you didn't. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.